So, couple thoughts, guys. Bellator, Friday night, main event is getting ready to walk right around 5 p.m. my time. Now, I don't have dinner till 5.30 every night, and I'm pretty consistent with that. I've never seen a main event prior to dinner. I almost missed the damn thing. I'm hoping you guys didn't. Gegard Mousasi beat Austin Vanderford, looked great in the process. Khabib Nurmagomedov came on the back of that. And Khabib said, Gegard is the most underrated fighter in the world today. Let's stay on that for a minute, because I feel the same way. We may be using the wrong word with underrated, considering he's the champion and he's rated as champion. But what Khabib is speaking to is appreciated. He is speaking to appearance and perception being reality. And Gegard is never discussed. I mean, we just did a middleweight greatest of all time two weeks ago. And I'm thinking of the faces on there, and Gegard wasn't even the conversation, and I never thought to put him on there. I talked to you guys about it. I read all of the comments. You guys never put Gegard in there? There was like a thousand comments, and not one of us brought Gegard up. I mean, Khabib could be onto something here. Why do we not look at Gegard that way? Is it because he's not in the UFC? Is it because he was in the UFC and didn't capture the championship? Or is it because he's just a nice guy and we forget about him? Guys, that's real. If you were to take the boys in the back in the locker room, who's scared of who? George St. Pierre wouldn't have been on that list, and neither would have Daniel Cormier. The two greatest fighters in the world at the time, and two of the greatest of all time, but they were just really nice guys. St. Pierre showed up to press conferences. He's in this gorgeous suit. His hair's looking cool. He doesn't use profanity. He'd never threaten his opponent. And part of that was because George was a really nice guy, but I have always wondered. I thought it was part of George's stick. Might not have been. But George never went into a fight where not only he was a favorite, he was a heavy favorite. George St. Pierre got so dominant that he was going off at three and four to ones and going years without losing a round. He would get in positions and stay there and mess with the guy. And it got into one of these spots where he was the one in the room building up his opponent. George would get in the room and, and the guy across, George said, this is the greatest striker I've ever faced. This is the greatest grappler in division history. And George wasn't just trying to convince the audience, trying to take a little edge, a little motivation away from his opponent. He was trying to give himself some drive, too. He was serving three different masters with those statements. I never know if it's how George really felt or if it's what he was doing to stay the biggest draw in the sport. Because when you get this level of dominance that George got to, not only did you beat everybody of yesterday and everybody of your day, you've now beat them all twice. It's tough, but that's how he went about it. And Cormier, you just can't upset. He's just a really, really nice dude. And he's just a really playful dude. And I bring you those examples because they're names that I know that you appreciate. And I know that you'll look back and go, yeah, those guys weren't really feared. I didn't know anybody that could beat them. It's the reason they were at the end of the night. It's the reason that they're champions of the world. But they didn't have that same edge. It's one of those things, right? And I think Gagar will go into that same category. The last person to sit in a chair, look at a camera and bring it to the world and tell you how great Gagarg is, is Gagarg. He's never done it once. He didn't call anybody out last night. He didn't call out last night's opponent, Austin Vanderford, after his last fight. He never came to the media and built, he never did anything. It's just not his approach, it's not his style. There's something very stoic about him. There's something terrifying about a guy like that. The baddest dude that has such a self confidence and such a self-awareness that he, he doesn't feel he needs to tell anybody. Now, that's another side to it. If you're not getting the dues that, that you think you want, you come out and you create them for yourself. Now you're dealing with a guy, Gagar Musalzi, who's got such a self-confidence that he doesn't even, he never once says how good he is. He never once says, I could deal with wrestlers in, in this case. He never once says, I'm going to get a guy out of here in the first round, but he's done that to multiple people, including Rory McDonald. He never does anything like that. He just goes in and takes care of business. And I think that's what Khabib's speaking about. Because when we do talk about the greats, if we don't put Gagarg's name on the tip of our tongue, we're just being incorrect. You're not only being rude, you're just flat being incorrect. I don't know a whole lot about Gagarg. And I know Gagarg. I don't know how old he is, just by example. I feel like he's been around forever. Here, Ryan's giving me notes. I think we got 36 Ryan's hold up. 36 years old. But Gegard was fighting on TV while I was still on the couch trying to figure out how I was going to have enough money to push the buy button. 
Gegard must have started at 20, 22. Do you guys remember he was over in Pride? He was fighting at heavyweight. Remember Gegard fought Mark Hunt. And they were both kickboxers, but Mark Hunt was a lot. I mean, I just remember these things. Gegard was training partners with Fedor for a period of time, and they went in the ring, and they did some kind of an exhibition. That was at heavyweight. I don't remember Gegard at 205 pounds. I think he skipped right over it and went down to 185, but he's had such an interesting career. And he's been in there with everybody. He's kept the same coaches, the same managers, the same inner circle. You never read anything in the headlines about Gegard making bad decisions, embarrassing himself, getting in trouble. He's focused. He's a focused and disciplined guy. He's not a self-promoter, but don't we have a job too? And if a guy goes out and wins as many fights as Gegard, don't we have a job to promote him? Don't we have a responsibility to elevate him as a way of saying thank you very much for your work? I've always known Gegard was good. Okay, great. Newsflash. I also knew that Gegard's going to get caught at some point that Father Time catches us all. That's not now. I've been waiting for Gegard to get old in that ring for half a decade. And I personally happen to know the guy that he fought last night. Look, Gegard's a very good kickboxer, but he took on a national champion wrestler. We have seen this story play out time and time again. And if you could just blindly, without even knowing who the participants are, identify a guy who won a national championship in wrestling, identify that his opponent has never had a wrestling match, you are very safe to blindly bet on the champ. You just are. You then also run in to age. Austin Vanderford's going about 27 years old. Now, Austin, I do know inside and out. He's an excellent friend of mine. Spoke to him this morning. He's doing fine, by the way. Austin ha had an injury going to that fight. That's not an excuse. I knew about that before the fight. I'm just sharing with you. Gegard threw a, a punch, and it was the right outcome. No sour grapes here, but that's what happened to that fight. So, of course, Austin has two choices now. He hangs his head, and he's embarrassed, or he uses that as a motivator to get back to him. That's the road he's going to go down. It's the first time he's ever tasted defeat. He's only lost two rounds in his entire career, and that represents the first fight. So. There's a quick update on Austin. But Austin's 27 years old. I could be wrong, guys, and he's 26. I could be wrong, and he's 28. You get the point. Gegard's 36 years old. Never wrestled a match. Is dealing with a national champion and can get him out there inside of five minutes. Yeah, we got to be a little bit nicer to Gegard, right? Don't we? Don't we owe that to Musasi? He's in there fighting heavyweights in Japan when he must have been 22 and 23. You want to fight Mark Hunt? You weigh 210 pounds and you're going to go fight Mark Hunt and basically an anything goes match at 23 years old. Think of the stuff this guy's done. I've had it. I have no other points. I'm bringing to this on Gegard. I read a thousand comments from you on a topic that I started. We all missed Musousi. Let's just agree. We don't overlook Gegard anymore.